I hear the flap shut and I look and I see her sitting on the bed rocking like this and I'm like hi and at the I Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance on hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So today we are going to get into one of my experiences in solitary confinement, thrown in the hole, lock, whatever you want to call it. I do want to preface this and give you a little disclaimer, let you guys know that I'm going to talk about some real details. I do not want to feel like I have to stumble over my words because people are going to get offended by what I say. You guys. 99.99999% of you guys are super duper supportive and I go hard for y'all and y'all go hard for me. I love you guys with everything I have. Like y'all already know how I feel about my babies. But there's going to be another percentage that's going to be offended by some things that I say and this is what it is. Either you guys want me to be real or you want me to sugarcoat it. And I don't know how to do anything other than be real, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. That's what we're going to talk about and that's what it's going to be, okay? So let's get into it. We'll just kind of start at the beginning a little bit. So I was in prison and I had a small little group of girls that I hung out with. Now in the dorm, dorm, <laughs> I always think it's a college campus when I say that. Definitely not a college campus, okay? It's a big warehouse-like-ish room, rectangle shape, bunch of bunk beds. In the middle there were singular bunk, it's like a bunk bed but just the bottom part. Twin, not even a twin size. What's that size that's smaller than a twin size? Anyways, basically cot size um, beds in the middle. So bunk beds all around the outer layer going all around the rectangular storm. Very hot in there. Windows always opened. Bars on the windows with screens on them and fans blowing. So you're always hearing that whoo, fans blowing because it's hot. It's super duper hot. The walls are cement and it's just there's, there's no air circulation. It's very hot in there. So one evening I was in the corner of the dorm area-ish thing and there's two sets of bunk beds, right? And then there's two girls on one bunk bed and me and another girl sitting on another bunk bed and we're sitting there facing each other, not talking to each other. Now, we were already perpetrating is what we like to call it back then, doing what we weren't supposed to do because there is only supposed to be one person sitting on a bed at one time at all times. You're not supposed to sit, even if you're sitting there playing cards, even if somebody has a broke leg, God forbid, and you're trying to help them, if you're on that bunk with them, you are messing up. You're breaking a rule, okay? Some of the guards were real sticklers about that, and some of them, you know, they were. if you're sitting there playing cards or something, they're not going to give you a hard time. They may say, get off, get off of it. There's a little saying that some of y'all know, and it is, one cat to a mat, okay? So, one cat to a mat, that's the saying. So we're sitting there, it's probably around nine or 10. It's dark outside, it's starting to calm down in the dorm. Everybody's been working all day, we're hot, we're tired. And me and the girls are just sitting there chatting. Well, there was this one guard who did not like me. And I genuinely did not have any, any interactions with her. She just always messed with me, always had something to say to me, you know, always, you know, came up to me, always was trying to catch me in something. And I genuinely wasn't really doing anything too bad. I mean, we're all kind of doing a little something. Let's just be real here. But I wasn't doing anything too bad. She could definitely have been using her energy on something more important. <laughs> but, you know, she had it out for me. Well, she was doing her rounds, I reckon you want to call it. And she was walking around the outside of the dorm. Because, see, the dorms are locked at nighttime, so you can't get out. And she was peeking in all the windows. And she came by. We saw her walk by. She walked there. And I remember being, oh, crap, let me get off the bed. Because Lord knows she's going to throw me in the hole or something. You know, whatever. She's going to write me up something. Just because we're sitting here, literally just talking. Y'all know 
I would tell y'all if we were doing something else. There's no reason to lie about it now. This is 11 years later, like I'm already out. I've already done my time. No, I'm not getting out of anything. I would tell y'all if I was doing something. So I'm kind of standing there because I know she's done seen me and I know she's already got it out for me. So I stand up, I'm kind of standing there on the bed. And then, you know, the other girls, two girls are sitting on the mat. She comes in, she walks straight to me, pulls out her cuffs, cuffs me, tells me to put my hands behind my back. I'm like, what did I do? Like, I'm thinking like, am I really going to walk for sitting on a bed talking to somebody? Like really what happened? And at that time she was only putting me in cuffs. So I didn't know what was going on. She's not telling me anything. She's jerking me around. She's pulling me. I'm trying not to resist because I know that some of them are just itching. Some of those guards, legit, no lie, wait for you to do something wrong so they can spray you or so they can hit you with something or they can they can act like you're being aggressive so you really 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 have to pick and choose your battles because if they decide to take out a wand or a flashlight and beat you up there's nothing you can do about it like what are you gonna do you're gonna call mommy and say they mistreated me they hit me you would have to get a whole judge and a whole lawyer and all that and the thing about the guards is they have each other's back so you go and call somebody and make this big stink and she's going to have 15 guards that's going to say that I'm lying even if I'm not. So you're really in a helpless situation in there. There's there's nothing you can do about it. So she's taking me, walking me across campus at nighttime. I'm in my little jammy jams, my prison jams, and she takes me into solitary confinement. And at this time, I still have no idea what I have done. Before I get this started and telling you about solitary confinement, I want to tell y'all that my friend that I told y'all about in a few videos back that, you know, does my nails, the lady that sits next to her, which, you know, I don't want to say her name because if she doesn't want to be on here, I get it. And I don't know what legally she can talk about or whatever. And I haven't been able to get her on the channel. I would love to get her on here one day. And if you're watching this, I will blur your picture out. Just come talk to me or I'll come to you. Like, let's, let's get these stories out. I was talking to her while I was getting my nails done this last time, and she was a prison guard for, I want to say she said 13 years, okay? And her husband was a guard for, for even longer than her, and they're retired now from that. They quit, and she was telling me, because she watches my videos, she was telling me, you know, of course, everything that I'm saying is true, and that her husband worked in solitary confinement, and he was the guard, okay? He still has PTSD to this day from working in there, and he has nightmares and night sweats, and he was the guard, okay? He wasn't even an inmate. That's how much solitary confinement can mess you up in your head, okay? So we're going to get into it now. So I was in a small prison, so this is a small campus, a small solitary confinement, which is good and bad, I guess, at the same time. So they pull me in there, they walk, they buzz, click. That's what the doors sound like. The big metal door opens. I walk in, I'm standing there, and I'm still at this point. Like, I have no idea why I'm even in here. So there's like a little long hallway, and then when you turn to the left, you turn to the left, and down this hallway is nothing but rooms going down both sides. They're the solitary confinement rooms that have just a, it's a big metal door, and all there is is like a flap. That's about, it looks honestly like a mail, you know, like if you were going to put stick mail through a door, that little flap that comes down, but it's metal and it locks from the outside. And that's actually how they throw your trays in there to you of your food, but I'll get to that later. And then on the door is this triangle piece of window, very small, probably about this big, goes up like this. And then it's glass, <laughs> very, very, very thick glass. And then inside the glass is metal brackets. So you couldn't break it even if you wanted to because then there's metal brackets inside of the glass. And that is what the guards use to walk by and check on you and make sure you haven't somebody while you're in there or you're not doing something crazy. So they take me back into the room. They open one of the doors, click, put me in there. Now, <laughs> I get into the room and the first thing I thought was, oh crap, the woman that I saw in the room with me. Before I start getting into you guys, even what happened in there, let me tell you about this lady. I think that this guard did this to me on purpose. I'm going to be honest with you. They're very malicious. This lady was an older lady. I want to say she was about 65 years old. I had always seen her on campus before. I was always very nice to her because I knew she had a lot of issues. She was a schizophrenic and 
I'm not talking about like a normal functioning person that has schizophrenic. And this is a part that I don't want anybody to get offended by. This is me. I'm going to give you guys the real tea. Okay. I got to be honest with you guys. She was one of those non-functioning very well in normal society schizophrenic. She was on so much medication that her lips were dry. I mean, I want to tell you guys, she was probably about five foot two, shorter lady, had a little bit of weight on her, had long hair that was gray, straight hair like this, real wrinkly face, sh like really sharp nose, scary looking, but that's not her fault. Dry lips because she's on so much medication that she's always walking around like this. You have to understand there's a lot of people in prison that have real serious mental disorders. And I'm not talking about your typical depression or your anxiety. I'm talking about probably should be in a mental ward and not in prison. It's almost inhumane to have them in prison when they should be in, in a different kind of facility. And she was unfortunately one of those ladies. Walked around campus like this pulling her hair out, pulling her eyebrows out, pulling her lashes out, like literally not right in the head. And it's a sad not right in the head. And I was always very nice to her, but I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't want to be in solitary confinement in the room with her because when you have somebody like that, you don't know what they're capable of. They could really, really hurt you because they're not in their right mind. And I guarantee you that guard put me in there in that room with her on purpose. So she puts me in the room, handcuffs still behind my back, and then they shut the door behind me. I still have the handcuffs on. And then they make you put your hands up to that hole that I was telling you about. Then they reach through and they pull your cuffs out while you're already in the room. And then I hear the flap shut. And I look and I see her sitting on the bed, rocking. Like this. And I'm like, hi. And at the, I still don't know why I'm in there. I don't know what I'm locked for. I don't know anything. And so I see the top cot. And it's in, in the solitary confinement room is a very small room, okay? Nothing, nothing but a room in there and bunk beds that are on the wall, but they're not like actual bunk beds. They're metal slabs that are attached to the wall that come out one on top of another. There's no ladder to get up. There's nothing to help you. It's you've got to literally crawl up there. She was on the bottom one, obviously, in the top mat because I just got in there. It's nothing but a mat. There's no pillow yet. There's no sheet. Very cold, icy cold feeling in that room. And then there's a toilet, the ones I've told you about before, that's a medical toilet. I'll pop up a picture here that has like a sink and like a little thing for toilet paper. And then the top of the sink is where you can stick your fingers in and get water out. And the water that comes out of that water fountain literally tastes like toilet water. I can guarantee you it's the same water that goes in that toilet that comes out the top. I mean, hopefully not after you use it. I mean, clearly, but it's still the same nasty water. <sighs> you guys. So at this moment, I'm thinking, I want to turn around and bang on this door and say, get me out of here. Like, I am scared. And I'm not saying, uh, nobody, I don't want anybody to get offended, but why am I in prison, right? I'm not in um, a, a doctor's office. Okay. I am in prison with criminals, with people who have done things to be here. And I can't even talk to this lady because she's not in her right mind. And I am locked in a room where there's no guards around to see anything that can happen. And I still don't even know why I'm in here. So I'm thinking to myself, I just want to start banging on the walls, but you know what? What is that going to do? What? Nobody's going to let me out of here. I am in here now and there's nothing that I can do. So the lady's sitting there rocking, kind of twitching, pulling out her lashes. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to get up on the top bunk. I get up on the top bunk and I want to cry. I want to scream, but I realize that it does not matter if I cry, if I scream, if I bang my head against the wall, if I punch myself in the face, nothing is going to get me out of the situation. I am in here now. The solitary confinement is a small room and the only thing that you can hear is the echoing of other people yelling, other people screaming. There are literally people in other rooms banging their heads against the wall. There's nothing in there to distract you. There's no books. There's no snacks. There's no commissary. There's no canteen. There's no pen or paper, especially at this point. There's nothing. You don't even get mail in solitary confinement. If somebody writes you, you don't get it until you get out. 
So I'm up on the top bunk and I am scared. I don't want to go to sleep. I'm confused. I don't know why I'm in here. I don't know if this lady is going to hurt me. I don't know if she's going to hurt herself. So all I hear, like I said, is the banging and the, and the screaming. And then I hear my name, Christina. And it's the other girl that was sitting on the bed with me. And I go to the, to the door and I'm yelling like, what? Like, hey, like, what are you doing in here? And she was like, I don't know. I'm locked too. Like, they threw me in confinement too. Like, I don't know. And I'm like, what is going on? So I get back in the bed and I lay there. And then I don't know when I dozed off or when I woke up, but I woke up to a smell. And the smell was the smell of feces. Now, I know if you know, if you go to the bathroom and you go poo, when there's feces in the toilet and it's covered with water, it smells one way, okay? It still stinks, right? It stinks. But when it is not in that water, it's a whole nother smell, my friends. The lady was smearing her own feces all over the walls. And I'm not talking about like a, like a trying to get out of solitary confinement kind of thing or like trying to make a way. I'm talking about, I don't know what was going on in her mind. She was in her own world and the smell, you guys, in that room, it was so small. There's really, the only kind of air you're getting is what's coming out from underneath the crack of that door, which is about this big. It's so tiny. And then I get up and I start banging on the walls. Guards, guards, like help me, help me. And they're not coming. They don't care about what's going on in there. Finally, after about four hours, and you guys, the smell was so strong, my head was hurting. And I, when I was yelling, she didn't even flinch. She didn't even blink. She's like walking around. She's like in her own zone. She's literally doing that. And it's crazy because she's like licking her lips the whole time, but her lips, her actual lips are so dry and so crackly. I feel so bad for her. Like she needed a popsicle, not trying to be funny, but she needed something constantly on her lips, but they had her on so much medication, so many psych meds that she was just completely out of it. So finally, when a guard comes, they walk up to the window and they call me by my last name and they're like, and then they see in there and they just kind of laugh for a second. They're like, we'll get it. We'll get it. I literally laid in that bed, didn't want to move. I was scared. I had to go to the bathroom. I was dying of thirst. Like, I'm definitely not hungry at this point. You're in a small room. All you hear is screaming. All you hear is banging. All you hear is these noises. And you're actually a halfway sane person, but you're about to go crazy. Like, what am I going to do? I can't stop this lady from doing this. I can't shake her. I'm definitely not putting my hands on her. I don't know what she was doing. Like, she's the kind of lady that makes she take a bite out of her own arm and spit it at me. You know what I'm saying? Like, what am I going to do? I'm laying up on my bunk and I'm just like praying to God that she doesn't touch my bed with those hands. Finally, I want to say maybe eight hours later, after my head is pounding from the smell, they come in, they tell me to put my hands on the thing, and they move me out of the room. They move me into another room, and I don't even know, end up knowing what they did with her, but they put me into another room. Now, I'm going to stop this video here because we're already getting along in, a lot into it. But I'm going to tell you guys later about the showers in solitary confinement, how you have to shower in a freaking two by two square room, basically with handcuffs on and about how I only got one shower in 30 days in there and all the other mistreatment that I had. But that is one story. That was my first 48 hours of what happened when I was in solitary confinement one time for 30 days, you guys. And I want to tell you that is... And I've said this before in videos that I don't believe that giving somebody an end of a life sentence, if you know what I mean, I'm trying to stay monetized, YouTube is so touchy about everything, is the worst thing you can do to somebody. Putting somebody in solitary confinement is the worst thing you can do to somebody. Solitary confinement is torture. Mental anguish, psychological torture. Like I said, that lady who's, who worked in a prison, her and her husband, her husband, he worked in there and he has PTSD from it. It is, I just remember sitting in there. This was after they moved me rooms and stuff. I remember sitting in there thinking like, this is the lowest, this is, 
this is rock this is underneath rock bottom is solitary confinement because like rock bottom is going to prison right like you, you lose all your freedom you lose all that but when you go into solitary confinement you are in rock bottom of rock bottom it don't get no worse than that the only thing worse than that is death and it's horrible horrible and i didn't even find out what i was locked for until what they do is they end up having a they end up having i know i told you i was going to end this video but i'm still rambling y'all know how grandma christina is they ended up they end up having like a little hearing for you so seven days in confinement i found out what i did which was they wrote me up that lady wrote me up and said that she saw me and the other girl kissing and we were not kissing. So I'm literally in here going through all of this for something that I did not do and still to this day don't even know why that lady hated me and did that to me, but they can do that in there. And that is the most disgusting thing. And I know that I'm gonna get 15 comments on here saying, don't break the law, you won't be in that position, you blah, 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 blah. I get that now, thank you. I pre you should have told me that 15 years ago, that'd have been great, but you know, a little too late <laughs> now, you know what I'm saying? But it doesn't matter. I broke the law, I did my time, I did not deserve to be treated like that. And when I go off on that tangent, I always try to remember that I am still blessed because I was in prison in this country. Because the prisons in other countries mm -mm, are way worse. And I think I'm going to end up doing some videos comparing um, our prison systems to, to other countries. I have actually got some requests on that, and I'm going to do that. But uh, yeah, so... I can, I can still remember that smell, the smell that made my head hurt, seeing poo all over those brick walls, all her fingernails. She had fingernails, you know, like those yellow, like old lady. I'm sorry, guys. I don't, I don't mean to say, I don't mean to, you know, but you know, like when you, a lady gets older and she smokes a lot of cigarettes and her nails have that really hard and it's kind of like this shape and it's really yellow. I just remember seeing poo under all her nails squished in between her fingers. I don't even know how she got it. She must have done that in her pants. I, I do not know. I could not even like, I had a pillow over my face at some point. Like my head was screaming because you're in this little tiny room and there's no air vents and the smell smell is so strong and what do you do what do you do right what do you do you cry you cry about it what's that gonna get you you know what i'm saying like what, what are you gonna you're gonna write a letter to the governor you know it, it it just it's the most helpless horrible feeling is being in solitary confinement all right guys got a lot more stories about that so <laughs> let me know what you guys think Please don't forget to like this video. It is a free way that you can help your girl out. And until next time, I love you guys so, 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 so much. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.